for now, let's do a, uh, a Q&A. And any questions you guys have about anything I just talked about, any terminology, anything about sound checks, anything you want to ask about the board, anything, please, uh, please go ahead. Anybody have anything? Yeah, come up to the microphone so we can hear you in the recording. Or you guys can pass it around if you want. Just rip it out. There you go. Uh, Dustin, you talked about setting the vocal gains kind of even mm -hmm. and for the room. But how, how do you fight feedback in that situation, um, either through EQ or through the gains? What, what does that usually look like for you? Yeah, uh, so first of all, let me explain what feedback is. Feedback is when a, a sound is coming into a microphone, coming out of a speaker, and it's looping back into the microphone and creating an instantaneous loop. That is feedback, okay? So most often, it'll present itself in one frequency uh, or a sine wave, as Ryan said, okay, to where you're feedback, feeding back in just one area. Like, you might hear a slight kind of thing, okay? The easiest way, uh, assuming everything is, is gain staged properly and all the levels are correct through the system, if you're fighting that and you still, if you need more volume or not enough volume out of that and you're fighting the feedback, is to fi identify that frequency and notch it out in your EQ. That's one way to do it. Now, if I'm standing back here and the PA is well in front of me and I'm still feeding back, something else is wrong somewhere. Something has gained up too much. It's, this mic is too sensitive to that, okay? So for here, I can come right out in front of this PA. Like, I don't know if you've seen, but there's been times when Pastor on his headset has gone out up the stairs, and I'm like, oh no. Luckily it's worked, okay, but here, this is about as much I can make feedback happen. There's nothing I can get any louder than that. Hey, 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 still not feeding back. And so, who? A little bit right there, so we can notch that out, find that, notch that out. And that's just going to take practice of identifying frequencies and go, okay, that's 100 hertz, and we notch that out. Take a little, little bit of cut out of that, or whatever it may be. Um, in terms of the, the uh, gain structure, like I said, what it, for the wireless mics, it has meant me, I typically take a microphone, go to the receiver in the rack, I'm looking at the lights on the receiver, and I just yell into it, uh, or... Sing. What I'm trying to do is create the same volume that any singer could reproduce on stage. If they were singing their loudest, hey, 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 I want to make sure that's not clipping. It's the strongest signal possible without clipping from here to the receiver. That's going to give me the best source on down the line, the best strongest signal. I don't want it to be too low. Um, so from there, I will typically, um, when with yelling into that, I would then have that fader up at zero, and then adjust the gain to where it's what I need it to be in the room, okay? Now that may look like uh, the signal is actually getting up to zero, um, but I know I'm gonna want um, my faders to be able to be up in the area around zero on the marker, um, so I'm not mixing my vocalists down here. I want them up here near zero, and so I would bring the gain up to as loud as possible. If I start feeding back, there's a process called ring, ringing out a microphone to where I, I gain it up, 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 up until I hear the first frequency feedback. I identify that frequency, take that notch out, bring it up again, and maybe, maybe the second cut or maybe I might do one more cut. Uh, I might do one cut or two cuts and then that's as loud as it's gonna get. Okay, so if you're, if you're not getting enough volume out of something, through that process and it's still not loud enough or it's too sensitive, probably something else is wrong somewhere else. Your, your system is not tuned right and it's, it's accentuating your frequency that's causing the feedback or there's some gain problem somewhere else in the signal. But you should be able to uh, take your microphone out into your house and get pretty loud with a decent EQ you should, on the microphone and on the system, take it out in the house and be just full volume loud. Ideally, so. Cool, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Cool. Um, 
So for sound checks, one of the things uh, I get asked a lot is, or a lot of feedback we get is, hey, our sound check took way too long, or how long should it take, things like that. You could spend three to five minutes on your entire drum kit, 30 to 45 seconds on each guitar and keyboard, and then one to two minutes on your tracks. And you're at, what, 10 minutes to getting through all your band and having them play. Uh, they play a song for three or four minutes. Then you do, um, you should be able to get through ear changes three to five minutes total for a band of eight to 10 people. So that's, we're now at a 20 minute total process to get through song, get through sound checks, song one, and ear changes. At that point, they then start band rehearsal and they go through song one, two, three, four. I'm not doing more ear changes between each song. I'm not asking them. If someone asks for something, say, hey man, can I get this or that? Um, I'll accommodate. And, uh, but I'm not offering, hey, is everybody okay? Does everyone need anything, need any changes? I let them get through the entire rehearsal. Again, because they have, they have a thing going on. They have a vibe, musician world up here. Um, so I'm not trying to interrupt that. I want them to continue progress, stay focused on what they need to do. And then at the end of rehearsal, before we go to run through, I'll say, does anyone have any last minute ear changes? And then typically it's no, but sometimes I'll go, you know what, I was hearing there's a little bit too much of this. Can you bump that down for me? And I'll, I'll make that change or whatever. Um, a lot of people um, on our teams, in the past there's been kind of a method of, everyone just raise your hand if you have changes. We're, I'm trying to push us away from that and doing the thing where we just read them like, drummer do you need, bass do you need, EG1 do you need. That way they don't have to, the singers are the last, and they don't have to wait here for three minutes with their hand up or whatever. And we, it also prevents everyone from shouting out, hey, can I, hey, can I, hey, me too, can I have, you know, uh, no, everyone, hold on, I'm gonna call on everybody. We're gonna go in order and get through this in the quickest way possible, okay? Any further questions? No, okay.